You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. Greetings. It is my pleasure to introduce the Angelina Photographic Association's color exhibit entitled Fungi, which is currently on display at the Museum of East Texas. My name is Josephine Taylor, Professor of Biology at Stephen F. Austin State University. The 24 works you will see today have been contributed by eight local artists and beautifully depict a diversity of reproductive structures produced by one of the largest group of fungi, the Basidiomycetes. The body of a Basidiomycete fungus consists of microscopic filaments embedded in the substrate it is degrading such as the organic matter in soil, leaf litter, or wood. Reproductive structures form at the edges of the fungal body and take on forms commonly referred to as mushrooms, shelves, conchs, and jellies. These fruiting bodies produce microscopic spores which are distributed by air currents to new sites of colonization. Each species of Basidiomycete can be characterized as to its habitat and the times of year that it fruits. Some fruiting bodies are soft and readily decaying, virtually appearing overnight and fading as the dew evaporates. Others are tougher and more leathery. They may persist for weeks to months. You'll see examples of both in today's exhibit. Fruiting body structure and development, as well as where and when the fruiting bodies are found, are used to identify Basidiomycetes. Some species are easy to recognize, others require examination of microscopic features such as spore size. In today's presentation, if I am able to confidently identify a species from its photograph, I will include that information. The first photograph is by Richard Faviel, who has three images in the exhibit. This first piece depicts a fragile, thin stalked mushroom in a forested habitat. Ridges of tissue on the bottom of the cap called gills are where the spores are produced. You can see the pattern of the gills in this elevated view of the cap's surface. They appear as radial lines that extend from the margins to the center. If you look closely, you can see the edges of the gills at the cap's edge. They have taken on a dark color as the mushroom has matured. Richard's second photograph illustrates a type of fruiting body commonly known as a shell fungus. A series of russet brown leathery caps are attached directly to a woody substrate. The funnel shape of these caps and velvety texture of their surfaces are striking features in the foreground of this image. A stump or host tree appears in the background. Some basidiomycetes exclusively colonize stumps. Others can grow within the wood of living trees causing a condition known as heart rot. Carol Riggs first photograph titled Settled In showcases the fruiting bodies of Exidia glandulosa, a type of jelly fungus. The fruiting bodies of jelly fungi have a gelatinous to rubbery texture. In this species a series of tiny cups fuse together to form a reddish to brown to black amorphous blob. Spores are produced along wrinkles in the cups. This jelly is much different than the typical mushroom, but in the same group of fungi, and has been captured beautifully by Carol. Dennis Rankin's first piece, Fungi in the Grass, illustrates an arc of mushrooms known as a fairy ring, a common structure produced by basidiomycetes colonizing open areas. When nutrients in the soil are evenly distributed, the body of the fungus grows outward at the same rate in all directions, producing circles of mushrooms at its outer edges. A number of species form fairy rings in lawns and grassy areas after summer rains. The mushrooms in the ring can be quite large and often attract a lot of attention. In folk tales, fairy rings represent the path followed by fairies dancing at night and sprinkling their pixie dust. Two different genera of Basidiomycetes produce shelf-like fruiting bodies with alternating zones of color on their caps, as captured by Carol Riggs in her photograph, Forest Surprise. Large clusters of these caps emerge from logs, limbs, or stumps. The colors present can include bands of blue, gray, tan, brown, yellow, and orange, 
making any encounter with these striking organisms a wonderful surprise. Some of the most common fungi found year-round, these genera are of great ecological importance in breaking down dead wood. Garden Fungus by Dennis Rankin shows a cluster of fragile mushrooms emerging from mulch. The pattern of the gills is evident in this top view. The cap has a characteristic central tan spot and is flat to slightly convex. These tender fruiting bodies might remain intact for only a few hours, just long enough to release their spores. Meanwhile, the fungal body from which they are produced can live for years, gradually releasing nutrients for plant growth through its decomposition activity. Mushrooms often change in form as they go through development, as evident in the photograph Star Bright by Carol Riggs. As seen from above, the cap of this specimen has developed fissures radiating from its center in a striking star-like pattern. These furrows might not be present initially, but be a key feature in identifying the species. Changes in structure and color can occur quickly and are typically associated with maturation and spore release. If specimens of varying ages are available, it is helpful to examine as many developmental stages as possible in order to make a positive identification. Richard Faviel has captured the oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus, in his third photograph. These white oyster-shaped caps emerge in layers from living or dead trees. The stalks are very short and the gills are prominent on the undersurface, running down the length of the stalk in an arrangement known as the current. This delicious edible is easy to learn to recognize and is grown commercially. Look for it in the forest during cooler months or in your grocery store. Donna Anderson's first image is a side view of two sturdy mushrooms known as boletes. The species are fleshy, the stalk single and central, and they are found on the ground. When you examine the undersurface of the cap, you will find many tiny tubes that open to the air as pores. Spores are produced within these tubes rather than on gills. Boletes form beneficial relationships with the roots of plants known as mycorrhizae. Certain boletes characteristically associate with specific tree host and produce their mushrooms around these trees every year. Color and texture are distinct features of Bill Tyndall's photograph titled Yellow Hat. Many mushrooms contain pigments that protect them from ultraviolet light and bacterial attack. The striking yellow pigment and the scaly texture of the cap surface are important identifying features of Bill's mushroom. Rings of scales are also prominent on the thick stalk, giving it the appearance of roughly planed wood. Bill's image vividly illustrates a whole community of organisms that this mushroom is a part of, including moss and invertebrates that are also colonizing the woody substrate. Stephanie Lemke's first photograph, Wide Open Orange, provides an opportunity for us to revisit changes in the form of mushrooms as they mature. We'll see a younger version of this same species, Ammonita caesarea, in a subsequent image. The cap color of Ammonita caesarea fades from bright to yellowish orange with time. As spores are released and the mushrooms begin to dry out, the cap splits in an irregular fashion. The genus Ammonita is one that every mushroom hunter should learn to recognize as it contains some of the most poisonous of all mushrooms. The ring around the stalk shown in Stephanie's foreground specimen is a key feature, as are white gills that do not touch the stalk and a cup-like base embedded in the substrate. Spring Hats by Thomas Willis illustrates the beautiful and delicate fruiting bodies of Lepiota lutea. These mushrooms frequently appear in groups within flower pots, planter boxes, and in lawns. All parts of the mushroom are bright yellow. The cap has a distinctly powdery to scaly surface. It is conical when young, opening to nearly flat with a raised center as it ages. Common names of this distinctive species include yellow parasol and flower pot parasol. Connie Thompson has captured a younger version of Ammonita caesarea, the species we saw previously in Wide Open Orange by Stephanie Lemke. The cap of this specimen is brighter and redder in color. Tiny striations are visible around the cap's edges, which have not yet started to split. Two distinct features of the genus Ammonita are well illustrated in Connie's image, the membranous ring around the stalk of the mushroom and the white cup at its base. Immature mushrooms of this genus are initially enclosed completely 
breaking out of the cup-like base as they rapidly expand. This is another example of distinct changes in form that can occur rapidly during mushroom development. Bill Tyndall's photograph, titled Underneath, gives us the best view yet of a mushroom's gills. These slender, leaf-like plates create a large surface area for spore formation. Although the body of the mushroom may be quite vast, specialized cells lining the gills are the only structures that can generate the spores. There are many characteristics of the gills that are used in mushroom identification, including color, spacing, and whether or not they make contact with the stalk. The cap of Bill's mushroom has become sunken as it has matured, further exposing the gills. Most mushrooms forcibly discharge their spores into the air. Donna Anderson gives us an overhead view of the cap and gills of a mushroom which appears to have released its spores. The edges of the cap are upturned and wavy and the gills have developed a brownish color. Spore color is an important character in identifying mushrooms and may differ from gill color. Spore color is determined by a technique called spore printing during which the cap is detached and placed gill side down on aluminum foil. The spore should be discharged onto the foil within 4 to 12 hours. Stephanie Lemke's piece entitled Snail Buffet features Tremella fusiformis, the second example of a jelly fungus within the exhibit. This ghostly white fungus is gelatinous and translucent, consisting of many lobes emerging from a common point. Spores are produced on the undersurface of each lobe. Found in warm climates throughout the world, this species has been used as a drug and a food in China and is cultivated commercially throughout the Orient. Donna Anderson's third photograph provides an overhead view of a cluster of mushrooms in the Smoky Mountains National Park. Mosses and ferns are also prominent within the characteristic understory community Donna has captured. The smooth brown caps of the mushroom have a glistening appearance. This cap texture is known as viscid, sticky, or slimy and is common among certain bolete genera. To confirm Donna's mushroom is a bolete, we would need to examine the undersurface of the cap to check for the presence of tiny holes called pores. Connie Thompson's second image in the exhibit provides another in-depth view of mushroom gills. There are a number of prominent features to note, including the close spacing, referred to as crowded gills, and the presence of short gills. Short gills begin at the margin of the cap but do not extend all the way to the stalk and are interspersed between full-length gills in this mushroom. At the point where the stalk was detached, a bluish pigment has accumulated. This staining reaction occurs when certain mushrooms are cut and is known as bruising. The presence or absence of bruising is one of the characteristics used in identification. Carol Riggs takes us to Mushroom Mountain with her fourth photograph in the exhibit. This interesting mushroom appears to be about midway through development. Its tan pleated cap is bell-shaped and covered with scales. Within a few hours, the cap should expand and flatten to expose the gills. The dark brown stalk is centrally located and highly textured. Carol's side view perspective of this mushroom as a peak it's sending from the soil surface is very striking. Connie Thompson's third piece illustrates the characteristic features of the genus Coprinus, often referred to as the inky cap mushroom. Mature specimens like these look like half-open umbrellas with the edges of their caps curled up and black in color. This mushroom secretes enzymes that break down the gills into a black, gooey liquid after spore release. The process is called deliquescence, and when you see it, you can be confident that you have found a member of the genus Coprinus. In his photograph titled Mushroom and Oak, Thomas Willis captures some overlapping shelves of the genus Ganoderma. The caps of these mushrooms are shiny, appearing varnished. They are tough, thick, and perennial, producing spores for several years. Commonly called conchs because of their woody texture and hard surface, these mushrooms can grow on dead or living trees. Detached from their substrate, the shelves hold their color and shape when dried and have been used to create artwork.
Dennis Rankin gets our mouths watering with his piece, Bella Trio Mix. The three mushrooms shown may look different, but are all members of the same species, Agaricus bisporus. White button mushrooms on the left, small brown mushrooms called baby bellas on the right, and larger portabellas in the center are formed by different select strains. These are the most widely used mushrooms in the culinary world and are grown by companies such as Monterey Mushrooms, which has a production facility in Madisonville, Texas. Mushrooms can be a delicious component of a healthy diet as sources of fiber, vitamins, and other important nutrients. We will use the last two images in the collection to draw our discussion to a close. Thomas Willis's beautiful photograph, Low Water Mushroom, is an excellent reminder that fungi are everywhere. Look for them while walking in the forest or relaxing by the lake. Their diversity in form, color, texture, and habitat can be captivating. We should also reflect on the important ecological role that fungi play as shown by Stephanie Lemke in the piece Shelf Fungi. Their ability to break down complex organic polymers provides for recycling of the chemical elements tied up in dead wood and other plant debris. Because of the enzymes they produce, fungi are some of the world's best decomposers and are essential to maintaining a balanced ecosystem. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation of the Angelina Photographic Association. I encourage you to visit the Museum of East Texas at 502 North 2nd Street in Lufkin, where the exhibit Fungi is currently on display.